Alright, now I'm start streaming. Let me see, I need to see the monitor myself. If you see me, just let me know so I'll hang out the phone. Okay, thank you. Hi, May. I need to do one more thing so I can monitor what's online there. Um, manage. Da, 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 manage. Channel. Let me see. I'm really got it wrong. Perfect. Videos. Hmm, it's not here. Let me see. They changed the studio settings. I cannot see. Let me see. Oh, I think I didn't update the information yet. I don't know why it does that. Um, I need to update this information. Okay, let me see. How do I do that? No, that's not. Are you seeing the, the thumbnail there? Um, so I don't see my live streaming signal here. Sorry about the technical problems. Oh, OK, here we go. Now I, I'm seeing myself. So uh, we got a uh, carbon value wind tune. OK. Um, I made a high hands. Uh, this video is uh, uh, a live um, streaming of uh, uh, carving a name seal for um, May. She is online. Um, let me introduce uh, her a little bit if I'm um, if I can. <laughs> okay, uh, May. Mei Le, or Le Mei in Chinese, uh, is her her name, and we're going to do this in uh, seal script. But let me write down this uh, uh, let me, can you see my I think I'm uh, I wish you can see here There is a delay, so I have to. Okay, here we go. Beautiful name. Um, Le means uh, happy or joy. Um, also, music. Um, it's also a Chinese family name. And uh, uh, Mei means uh, plum, uh, one of the four gentlemen. Um, do you do you also paint? I, I assume this is for your art, right? Uh, she's also a martial art um, student, uh, disciple of the third generation master uh, Liang Xiang. I I don't know how to pronounce the Cantonese. Uh, Lam Shan. Anyway, uh, or the fourth generation. Disciple of uh, Yin Man, Ye Wen, right? Very famous uh, master. You can watch uh, on the martial art videos. Um, Yin Man, uh, the Wing Wing Chun, uh, Yong Chun or Yong Yong Chun, Quan, 
Win Chun, Yung Win Chun. <laughs> I, I have difficulty to pronounce the Cantonese name. Um, so the the seal script look like this, and you can still see the the uh, in in seal we read uh, from left to right. When we we write horizontally this way, same as in English, but if we write vertically, so it will be like this. So um, the you can you can write faster to simplify that like that. Do you do you like to learn a little bit uh, uh, how to sign your name? Yeah, Liang Xiang. That's Liang, Liang Xiang is the um, gr we call great teacher of uh, Wing Wing Chun, right? Wing Chun or Yong Chun, Yong Chun, fisting. Yeah. Is it better? Okay, <coughs> let me write uh, the script first. Then we'll write the cursive uh, signature style. And this is the actually a script that you can write even more uh, standard way. So it will be. In this case, we we start from the center. But normally we start from one side. I, I, I like to start since it's easier to control. You can start from left to right normally, um, in most cases. And then this this uh, button is a mu or a tree. This looks like uh, some uh, cocoon of uh, uh, the uh, silk. Small, maybe. Uh, anyway, this is a le or yue. It could be a music instrument with uh, strings. Uh, that, uh, it's a f like a, a frame, wood frame here. So le, le, um, lock it in Cantonese, maybe. Mei, <coughs> mei. You write the uh, tree radical. On the left first, and then this. My brush actually is too, too thin to for this, but uh, it's okay. When you sign your name, you should use a small brush like this to go with the seal. Normally, you, you write in this size, so it could be smaller. A little bigger is fine. So this still goes with that. And if you write uh, a little faster, it will be like this. We call it. Uh, uh, this is standing. This is uh, walking. Xing uh, Walking uh, means uh, you can write a little faster. With more um, connection. Of strokes, but not yet in one stroke like uh, the cursive style. You can combine some strokes like that. See, and you can just do one, maybe <coughs> one dot instead of two. Um, the cursive style next will be. Uh, Actually, you know, the simplified characters is derived uh, from this cursive style. So you can write like that. Look, uh, you probably see this um, in simplified Chinese, like this, the standardized later than like that. <coughs> May. Okay, you can sign this way. This is the cursive style. Oh, you can write, uh, you can simplify the, uh, the two sides into two dots and then like that. The different, a little different. 
I'm going to put uh, that's also possible. Okay. Uh, which one is your favorite? Maybe this two. Huh? You can also sign in the depends on the painting style. If you if if I paint uh, elaborate style, I will use uh, this uh, standard script or print. Uh, this if I write more like spontaneous style, I will use this. Okay. And uh, the seal script uh, is very pictographic. It's uh, called uh, bronze bronze uh, inscription style. So, uh, this is more like a, the large or big seal script, older, which means not, not really big, but older. Um, small script, small seal script is more um, squarelized. Uh, it's a as early as the Qing Dynasty, uh, the first emperors of uh, China, first emperor of China who unified China, uh, is the, this this style. So it, the, they are very old style. We we still uh, maintain keep that in the form of a uh, uh, name seal. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, you can practice. Uh, you can watch this video and follow the sequence of the strokes. Um, okay, I will send you this uh, this piece of paper so you can. Uh, what I do is I I can you know use rice paper. You can uh, put on top of that. You can still see the. You can trace it actually. Uh, in the beginning, or you can use pencil to to write the guide and then trace it. So the next I'm going to talk about the, the seal design a little bit. Uh, we had the, uh, the, the seal uh, design takes most of my time actually. Uh, it involves research. Uh, I usually go through um, the ancient uh, dictionaries uh, of the ancient seals online, and then I collect all the uh, ancient seals I could find, and then I develop my own design. Um, you can see there are other options we had. This one is uh, similar. Uh, it's a it's also a uh, yin and yang. And on the left, it, actually, the the first uh, name, the last name comes uh, first, but it's on the right. Um, and this, and on the right, is the the character le uh, yue. But in in name context, we we read as le. Le means happy, um, and the mei is uh, on the left. Uh, in yin style. So if you have yin yang, uh, you, normally the last name. Uh, is in, uh, yang, sorry, positive, and then uh, the last name is, I mean, the first name, which comes after the first, after the, the last in Chinese, uh, is in, in a negative carving. We call that engraving. Um, this is a relieving, maybe. Uh, here's another one, it's uh, more like um, uh, the later style. Uh, after Han Dynasty, maybe you know we have more squarelized, um, more uh, look more decorative. Okay, um, but I, I still like the first one. It's more uh, uh, antiquarian and more antique antiquarian old um, with the more pictograph. Okay, and it's very. Um, powerful, like martial art, you know. Okay, the the strokes are, are stronger, with more muscle, maybe. <laughs> so, uh, May's choice is the 
first. Usually the first is also my choice. <laughs> Often. Okay. I uh, after approval, I will use uh, LaserJet printer to to print exactly the same. Uh, usually a little smaller than the stone. Uh, this is the stone. Uh, May has uh, chosen it's a, uh, a monkey on top on, on the knob uh, because she she was uh, born in the year of a monkey. This year is the my year uh, monkey. Uh, I mean it's a pig. So we have some zodiac uh, stones available. Uh, someone asked me if I can carve this kind of this is a different art the knob so I, I, I don't do that sorry um, but we do have some uh, pre-carved zodiac symbols if you like to have okay and uh, I need to send this paper I mean send uh, this with a sandy pa sandy paper send this stone with sandy paper um, because it comes with a wax polish so I just send off I believe it's a zero, number zero, number zero, uh, fine. Because it has been used, it's actually finer than the new one. It's a little warm here. This part is worn, so it's finer. So I just polish it. Okay. Let's clean it with powder towel. Just, we might use it again if uh, the transfer fails. Okay. Let me use. Uh, Here, so I use a felt uh, and a mouse pad, and then use it as a felt. Um, I I, pr I print out this design with a laser jet printer. You have you can use a copier uh, with a cartridge, uh, tonal cartridge, not to the inkjet ink. You know you have to use the dry tonal printer. Uh, uh, to work with a liquid called uh, acetone, it's a 100% pure acetone. It's a uh, nail polish, nail polish remover. You can get from any cosmetic supply stores. It's a, it's also a paint remover. You can get from hardware stores, I believe. But they come in larger size, maybe. It evaporates fast. Okay, so um, I place it on the stone with the ink side down, and then just pour a little bit of acetone on it, on it. Within 10 seconds, it will evaporate. So I, I have uh, about 10 seconds. Just before it gets dry, I press with my palm 
with my hand. You can use a scrubber, something like that. It might also help. So this is good enough, not perfect. As you can see, uh, during the carving process, there might be many accidental effects. Uh, so it's not 100% uh, like the, the, the design, the plan. So I try to get a, as close as possible. Okay. Uh, so this side is a little bit off center, but I, I think it's okay. Um, oh, another thing I, I, I almost uh, forgot. I think I didn't make a mistake. If you have an animal tough, the, uh, the uh, animal should face the user. This, this is wrong, right? This, this, this is the front. So the face, face user, you know the orientation. If you don't have a, uh, a knob with a face, uh, I normally sign on the left side, so you know the orientation. This, this, uh, if you if you did this wrong, so the people will always use the seal like that. It's strange. So you should always keep the animal facing the user when you make uh, this transfer. I think we are fine to to, to have a go. Uh, I can redo this if you you know we need to center it better, but. Uh, I think it's good enough. So we align on on the left. On the left, yeah. It's a little bit uh, off center, but it's fine. It should be smaller than the stone, anyhow. Yeah, it will be. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, trim off trim off the, the extra margin. I, I cut the corners and then uh, a little bit make the, the margin into a slope. So you start to make you know into a, a relief like I said it's a it's a it's a relief um, or it's not just two dimension; it has three dimensions. You know, if you press harder, the stroke it will be thicker, right? And also the border. So the border is not just uh, at a at a straight angle; it's a slope. And uh, to make it look old, I need to make the corner rounded. Like one corner. Okay. And this could be the last step, but usually I do it first uh, a, a little bit because I I I I can have some feel or uh, uh, feeling after you know the stone. It, some stone is harder, some is softer. It's a uh, kind of stone called soapstone, but it's not really that soft like a soap. Looks maybe the color, the appearance. Um, I can hold the knife like this when I do this kind of powerful. This is the most powerful way. Usually you can use your wrist. Towards you, you know, or you can cut this way. Some, some, some people do that. I usually pull the knife towards me. You can see I hold the stone in my left hand when I do this because it's, uh, I use both hands uh, to collaborate. Okay. This is a, 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 a corner that's kind of uh, curved. So it's not not perfectly squares. It's 
kind of natural shape. Okay. Now I use a clamp so you can um, you don't if you if you don't have you don't you know you you can use continue to use your left hand holding the stone, but it's easier to have this to focus uh, with the camera because otherwise I always go outside to to focus. Now um, I will do this uh, uh, le first. You don't have to follow the writing uh, sequence. Uh, so you can start from the bottom or corner, anyway. Let me just make up a little bit the missing part. Uh, I, I'll have a. Uh, I forgot to do that. Sometimes uh, I would flip. I, I will flip the image. Uh, so I, I have a mirror image, same as the the one on the lower left. I mean, uh, different from the uh, on the, you know the, the the image you saw you see on the bottom left uh, is a flip. It's the correct image, the, the final result, but this is uh, the mirrored image on the stone. Uh, since this one is, is uh, symmetrical, so it doesn't matter, but um, when you come to this one, it might be uh, a little, it feels a little different. So, just let you know. If you write the design with a marker pen, you can do so, uh, but you have to write image uh, in mirrored. So you can use a mirror to flip it, or just use computer to flip it. I use a large knife. You can use a regular one, this size, but not use too small, too more small tools because that's not very stable. But it, it's good for detail, but not very stable. It will uh, swing. So I try to um, do the major shape first. The principle is you cut the the form, the the, con the outside form, you know, and then the inside. Uh, you, I always say that you do the envelope and then the what's in the envelope, right? Same as you you paint. Concentrate on the large shape first. Then details. You can, if there's a division space, you just cut it straight. And then you, you you make it uh, more um, there's a very little space. <laughs> okay, I think it's a little bit light. My my print today is not very clear, so I can use this. So this this transfer serves as um, like a, the layout, the precision. Just like a painting and the writing, there are some some um, rhythm, you know, like a. Some solid, some uh, soft, some hard, some soft.
Um, I think the uh, the better way to do this is to cut in between two strokes deeply, you know, so you, you, you don't touch the stroke in the beginning, you just, you just cut a, uh, a ditch, you know, a guide a kind of line along one stroke, maybe, and then you can broaden that gradually towards the stroke, that's an easier uh, more controllable approach, but uh, automatically most people would just like I just did <laughs> cut along the the margin. That would be very uh, hard. Sometimes it takes uh, takes practice if you do that. You know, just like uh, go go directly cro close to the to design. Um, that's very hard. But uh, you still have to leave a little space for fine tuning. So you, you do it just thicker than you think, than you, than you uh, need. And then you go gradually towards the fine line because you cannot add to it, you can only deduct, right? So it's better to go slow. Instead of, uh, if you break it, you have to redo it. So I cut the, the the if you have an open you know the floor the deepest part is uh, the uh, towards the center of the space and getting like a slope uh, to the to the stroke or to the edge so you you cut. In, in the middle of the space is to start with, and then you cut deeper and deeper and then broaden it from there. I'll, 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 uh, because this is a learning <laughs> video, so I will try to do it the easy way or the, you know, the risk-free way. Not risk-free, less risky way. There's always a risk, like uh, any art, you have to take risk somehow. So it's also, you have to open to to the uh, accidents somehow. We expect something, but uh, also plan uh, open to any surprise. Another thing you might already notice is that uh, um, the any cut has a, a rough side and a, a, a smooth side. Uh, the angle, uh, the, with a small angle, you know, the outside maybe is uh, smooth, and the inside is uh, as chipping. There's a chipping side, and then the so that's why I have to turn the stone. If you want to have a rough the rough edge you use the outer side let's call this uh, left side or right side the, my right side is the smooth side left side is the uh, rough side uh, outside inside i don't know how to call it you it's it's pretty easy if you just start carving yourself and you will realize that as soon as you as your first cut, you know which side is is chipping, right? The small angle side. I, I read uh, a comment the other day, uh, some user f uh, feedback saying uh, it looks so easy in my uh, previous videos. Uh, I made it too easy, maybe. <laughs> uh, and they, they, he, he wondered why I charge so much. And, uh, he start, uh, and uh, after he tried himself, um, 
he understood why. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. All right. Yeah, for me, it's. Uh, um, I don't know how long I can do this because my site getting worse. So I have to. You know, upgrade to my uh, reading glass every year. Okay, this uh, inner space, uh, same thing, you start from the center of that uh, little, little window. And then just kind of, if it's round, you can rotate the stone instead of the knife. Cut the center and then just rotating like that. It's in between round and the square. That's the beauty of it. I think I have to go back to this my marker pen again. It's like number eight. Now I can see better.
Just like a calligraphy, you have to be confident. <laughs> Not do it little by little, you know, just one stroke. Okay. Because the design is like a um, long, uh, so some stroke, especially horizontal or lean, uh, slant ones, should be thicker than the vertical. You know what I mean? This one, uh, my design is touching the, the edge. So some, some uh, uh, open, some close space, negative space. Well, I think already it might change. So this. This is touched. Okay, so maybe I reverse that. One side is touching, one side not. Only. I just deepen and deepen. At the same time, it will automatically go uh, towards the stroke or the the edge. If you just deepen that center. I use uh, the debris to fill in the space so I can see the stroke. I just let the, the white color there. Someone has tried this. How do you, how do you like carving this stone? It's fun, huh? It, it's really addictive, you know. If you're really into it, 
it, it's very rewarding. Because it's a lifetime investment, <laughs> you know. If you have a good storm, it will last forever. It lasts forever, yeah. So just spend your time, take your time, don't hurry. Enjoy the process. Yeah, I've done 500, 500 seals. So that that's more than Chi Bai Shi did. He he at some point he said he's a 300 rich uh, man, 300 seal rich man. So 300 stone uh, rich man. I'm a 500 stone <laughs> rich man. Yeah, I you know be very careful when you come to the corner. The two stroke meets. It should be kind of rounded, not a straight angle. Okay, and uh, this is a pointed, pointed uh, tip. I need to kind of narrow it, and then there is a space that separate. The margin from this character. Okay. You know that you cannot really duplicate the the design, so just concentrate on the on each cut, you know, just as long as natural and if you understand the design thoroughly you can you have some way to to be um, spontaneous you know okay so I will do fine tuning later because sometimes I want to get the, the large part finished then go back to this little details like here is a Space there and just cut it off. Okay. All right. There's a little bit. Usually, I don't have this situation where I cannot really see the design. So I have to rely on my understanding. It gives me more freedom, actually. So basically, I divide the uh, space. Just keep the space between strokes even and parallel. At the most time, you'll be fine. Two strokes per per uh, two cut per stroke, but this stone has some unevenness in it. It's kind of hard to keep it even, but I like it. It looks more natural. Organic, very organic strip. Rounded corners are the curved. You just cut the center of the stroke and then you can repeat 
with that guideline. Not straight. Only the center struggle was straight. Now I have to curve. It's very subtle. You dance in in a uh, very small platform. That's the beauty of some engraving art. Oops! <laughs> Scale me. Almost uh, cutting through. Because there's a bump, like a sand. Uh, so when you, when you force it, it would just uh, over, go over. So it's kind of hard to. Uh, it, that's why I keep it break by holding the knife. This way, I, my. my uh, uh, ring finger and the small finger serve as a brick. So I, I use this three finger to push and then this two finger to uh, resist. So it's a so I don't push too far. If I do it like this, you will go this far, right? I I I hold the stone this way and then I I only cut with my finger. I don't go like that. See my my small finger, ring finger always. It's just like you paint uh, on, on on canvas, and you use a small finger to guide your 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 brush. You know? Same thing. I, you have to have uh, support. And at the end, I don't push, I just cut like that to, to stop. It's kind of hard. I got sand here, so I go another way. Or just leave it. Okay, like right that. Okay. This is the tree radical and the the phonetic uh, phonetic part may and so the pronunciation part indicated palm palm tree.
it's all S shift curve. Okay. Beautiful. This is like a lady. There's long hair. have to uh, light this uh, in a mirror image. This is what I do. I, I hold it against the light. So uh, you can see the strokes. Here we go. That's the one. Yeah, I just remember this. If you if you notice the structure of the characters, you don't have to rely on the design. If you don't know, you have to you you, <laughs> you, you just trace without understanding. Then it's very easy to get get it wrong. So I just do the center line first without uh, worry about the width, then I will go back and uh, broaden it. Because this part, I don't want to make any mistake on the strokes. It's very intricate part of it. Let me see. So I just cut the center line. Several A's entangled. Okay, let me see. This is straight on. Goes right down. And then this is the long leg. Like that. And then here's the. Just like a plain Tai Chi, you 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 go down before you go up. And then hold hold it back, not just push through stuff. Okay. And okay.
it, it, you cannot stop in the middle of a, a section, but uh, you, you'd have to stop. Oops, this one is so. Excuse me.
Okay, let's start to find twenty.
to very narrow space, you cannot really cut deep. So it's really relative to how much space, um, like this area is the deepest. So it's really hard to say how deep you, you need. There's a sand there. I try to clear, but it's kind of hard. <coughs> you don't want to break that circle. Okay, so I have to label that. Okay. Let me clean this up so we can start making testing input. I'll just rinse it on the faucet, maybe. There's too much debris.
and I have to I mean, clean this, dry this, this paper towel, because the ink is oil based. I use cotton paper towels, so it's not very rough. You don't use uh, regular cotton. Uh, you can use tissue without uh, conditioning, you know, those oily things uh, to clean this. Okay, I'm using this uh, old, old uh, pad. So don't mind if any debris on, on that. It's getting hard in the winter, so if you put it in a hot, warm area, you will soften. It is normal, you know, to sounds like this. It's very hard. You just keep dabbing it. Don't hit the edge. Okay, now let's see how it looks like. Let me use this piece. Um, I need a rubber pad. I use a mirror underneath it just to. Yeah, you, you can use a uh, tabletop without the mirror. So this is something hard, and uh, then the padding is uh, like this. We, ha we have this available on our website if you want. You can use magazine if you need. Uh, you can use magazine instead. Okay. Just press really hard uh, the monkey facing the user. Okay. And okay. What do you think, May? <laughs> The best seal paste is the the Shilin brand. Uh, I have refills like this. Yeah, this is the the Shilin brand. Let's let's try it. I think this is also Shilin, but it gets old. Uh, you can get a new set or just use refill to fill in your. Just get rid of the old. You know, use the container. You can use get refills from us. The Shilin brand. X I. L I N G shining. Okay. Hold the paper with your left hand because it's it might do this. See? Okay. I need some uh, fine tuning. We're almost there, I think. I like it. Um, some strokes may be a little too thin, but you don't want it too even either. Let's see. The left is right. Right is left. You have to get used to this.
let's see, it's probably okay, just leave it thing. Uh, just connect a little bit more, I think that's all I need. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, May. Let me do another test. 
as you can see the um, result is a little bit different always you know from the design more dynamic more organic usually because I, I'm not uh, really um, try not to be bound by the design I try to recreate you know, the design on the stone so it's always better than the design I hope okay looking at uh, the edges now you know you're going to finish when you look when you're working on the, sh the stone edge so we're going to cut this this is too, too thick we want to make this thing as the design And uh, this part, okay, this is too tall. Okay. You know, if you if you uh, wave the stone, the border will get thicker. You see, the, each stone. I didn't touch this yet, but you can see. This one is thinner because I didn't press that hard. Um, so each each print could be different. Okay, let me show you another thing. Um, you need this stirrer is made of uh, foam, but now we have plastic ones available on the um, website. Go ahead and add. You can get a stir. To make it into a do, dome, dome, a do. It's a dome top, rounded. Not that flat, you don't need to flat. Because especially when you have a larger stone, you, you can load in once. You, you have to raise the the paste above the, the edge sometimes to, if you have a really large stone and you you load very carefully like that you can check see if you got the ink And in other video you have seen, uh, I learned uh, the trick from other artists. I use finger to tab it. You know. If you don't want to uh, get your finger dirty, just uh, do it uh, very gently. Okay. And let me see. This hopefully will be the last. Test. Then we'll do the final. So press hard and then lift it gently. Okay. What do you think, May? Uh, I think this could be thinner, but it, um, we can thin, thin it from inside. A little bit maybe. I want to make the, make the top and the bottom a little different. So let's do it this way. I just cut out the slope, not really um, on top of the ridge, you know. And I just make the slope steeper 
that will narrow down the because the, remember this is a relief rubbing you know uh, some of that lines from the slope not the the ridge is very very thin already see but because the slope is uh, you can make it you know like steeper like that so just cut the bottom or reduce the thickness of the line so you cut like a more straight it will reduce the thickness I think we don't have to st stay with that round corner we can make it a little squarish Sometimes I just use this one to adjust the ink. I really want it to be very solid. This one. So. So I don't have to press hard. This is kind of hard to to stand this one because, generally speaking, when you have a, a positive seal, you want to press less, so the line is finer. If you have a negative seal, you want to press harder to make the line more uh, uh, less grind on the background. I, I blow a little hot air just to soften the reduce the grain. Just press medium hard. Yeah, that's that's very close to what I expect. I think it's but now I, I made this uh, inner space more. Now you can see the thinner bottom, so it changes. Um, I think it, it's okay, so it could be as thick as this or as thin as that. So when, when you stand, when you load, you, you each time it will be different. So just, you know, appreciate uh, each print, the difference. Okay. This could be a little bit. I don't like the sharp ending uh, on some of the strokes. If it's too sharp, it just like a like fishbone <laughs> sticking out. That's not good. Um, so we try to reduce the sharp points a little bit. Okay, one more take. 
Eric says, I'm finally this vision of the new carbon heavy. Why is he doing all this? I don't know where he is. Okay. Yeah, some, um, sometimes, you know, watching the video is the best to learn a craft because um, it takes hundreds of words to describe something very simple, you know, to, to get from a video. Um, so I always a video learner myself. Reading books won't work <laughs> to learn a craft like this. I have lots of books, by the way. I um, well, there's some theory, you know, like design principles. There's an in the unbalance, that kind of same space, negative, positive. It's all the same, you know, with any any visual art. But uh, um, you have to master the special media, the tools. And, Okay. One last thing is to just make this part a little thinner. This used to be the um, the uh, the chipping random chipping is the authenticity mark uh, because it's hard to reproduce this kind of this kind of chipping. But these days they have the computer fit to, you know, duplicate <laughs> this as well. Um, so I'm going to make a official imprint. Okay, I'll use the rice paper, collect uh, Book. You can get this book from our store. I call it a Sumi sketchbook. It's the same thing, but without this this uh, border. Um, it's a small stem I did, chrysanthemum. And uh, this is uh, for my Western painting teacher, Shiro Xieliar. Okay. Kind of sticky. Some people complain when they got this, it says too hard. I would complain this is too soft. So, what I can do is you know, put it in the refrigerator sometimes uh, to, to harden it. Or if you have a, a snow outside, just put it outside. This oil base and it turned too hard, hardened over time and uh, in lower temperature. Oops, I moved a little bit. Let me do it again, maybe. A little blurry. Because the ink is too much. After use, you just use paper towel to clean the residual. Don't let it dry, so you will feel the strokes eventually. You can use the soap to clean it. Use the uh, toothbrush, old toothbrush. This struggle is uh, blurred. Okay.
they will try it. And it takes several days, maybe uh, even months, if you you know smudge it. Don't sm uh, do that. Um, I will make some custom copy for me. I just use index card. Because the stone is, is hard, that's why we need something soft. Uh, the rubber under under the, the paper. If it's the rubber, then you need to put it on a solid padding, right? So we just load the ink gun, and uh, you can use your fingertip like that to load it. Let me show you. If you really have an important work, you don't want to. If you, you want full control, you. You just do this, like uh, I saw a professional artist did this in front of me in China in one of my lessons. I should just stand it like that. So you load the ink with your fingertips. Evenly. But there might be finger print on the final, but uh, it's okay, I think. It's more authentic, right? Okay, now you, you, you can clean your hand with the paper towel. Okay. This monkey facing. I shake a little bit so the border might be thicker. Oh, it's good. Yeah. One more. And uh, let's just do it without the finger, see what's the difference. The finger loads less uh, than you directly load, I think. You'll see more solid. <laughs> but, uh, this corner could be a little better. The next time I just, you know, press a little harder on the left corner may help. I also need to make sure this is loaded. All the four corners are loaded. And then the center. Left corner, right corner, don't mind the top, it's always okay. Th that's what I miss. So you, you can control it, it, your pressure is more on the bottom, so you can see the top. So best is uh, even pressure, so you got the designed result best, I think. If you press on one side, this that side will be uh, stronger. I just press evenly without without much pressure. Maybe you know, just like that, even. Okay, and then lift straight up, and that's the best, right? So far, yeah. Looks really like a ancient seal, right? <laughs> okay.
uh, thank everybody for following me on this video and I hope you all you have learned some basic idea of uh, seal engraving art uh, it's a 2000 uh, year uh, tradition uh, of seal, seal engraving um, and uh, I try to keep this alive if more of you are interested in learning and trying yourself you can you can carve um, anything like uh, uh, images logos uh, or uh, even English initials uh, you cannot really put a very long name but you can put some letters uh, look like you know the Chinese seal in, in one uh, period in, in Chinese history uh, the Yuan dynasty that was under the Genghis Khan the seal flourished into all languages in the empire so um, we call that signature chop uh, you can if people just sign their name in their written English uh, I mean in Chinese and sometimes in their native language and most of them are not really readable it's like a signature mark you can handwrite it um, we have that uh, signature mark kind of style so it's a very very um, embarrassing art form you can do anything and if you are good at this your painting will also improve because you feel like uh, you're, you're carving when you paint into the brush uh, we call that a taste of uh, stone and the bronze in the painting that's a very high quality line or stroke in, in Chinese brush painting or calligraphy so seal is uh, the inspiration source for other visual art in, in uh, Chinese art tradition uh, like calligraphy it's a, actually it's a form of calligraphy okay happy holidays and happy new year until next time Goodbye. Thank you, May, for your time. Uh, thank you for your commission.